Yo guys, Aquatic here, and welcome to my list of the easiest to play killers and the hardest to play killers for people who may be new to the game or maybe just curious. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, it is a subjective list. I'm sure some people will disagree. Um, let me know in the comments. Like I, I'm genuinely curious what you guys think is the easiest killer, the hardest killer, what's best to learn with. And uh, yeah, leave, leave me a message. I read everything. So with that said, let's get to it. So <clears throat> I'm going to just start off and we're just going to put them as uh, as I pull them out down here. So we're going to start off with the blight, um, <laughs> which is funny because the blight is, in my opinion, the hardest killer to learn. Um, the blight is extremely hard to learn. You have to learn his timings on um, his power. You got to learn how to bounce around accurately, like the trajectories to do it right. You have to learn how to hit survivors. You have to learn, and this is a big one, every single map and every single thing on every single map that you can bounce off of because some objects you cannot bounce off of. And it's very difficult. Like his, his power runs a certain way. There's times where if you miss a survivor, you gotta know how to like stop yourself. You, it doesn't just stop on its own, um, unless you run all, like all the way. Um, it's, he's extremely complicated, almost deceptively so, if you kind of look at, just read his description of his power. Um, extremely difficult. However, he is one of the strongest killers in the game because he is so fast moving, he can traverse the map very quickly, and any survivor that is trying to avoid him, he can just bam, 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 then they're down. They just can't, the survivors just can't move quick enough. They can't dodge him quick enough. So uh, it may take hundreds of hours to get proficiently good with him, but if you do, you're gonna be in for a good time because he is so, so strong as a killer. Um, but he is the hardest one to learn. Next up, we have the clown. Now, the clown is actually pretty dang easy. Um, I'm gonna say he's probably one of the easiest. Um, he does have a, a surprisingly uh, decent skill cap, but you don't really have to reach that skill cap necessarily. Um, all you really need to do is uh, throw your purple gas bottles, which slow and disorient survivors, and just mouse one. He's a fairly simple killer. Um, he does have the yellow gas, which makes him go quicker, but you don't really have to use that a lot. Only like, only really elite tier clown mains uh, actually utilize that effectively. When I play him, I almost never use the yellow gas because um, I'm, well, I'm not a clown main, but uh, his purple gas really can do a good job. Um, it's very easy to use. It puts an area of effect. You can, uh, you know, replace your bottles on the fly with, you know, uh, pretty easy, pretty fast, and you can hold your bottles while moving, which makes, you know, him uh, a little bit better at anti-loop than he would otherwise be. Um, it doesn't have an ability to teleport or anything to worry about. He's fairly simple. Um, so, yeah, I think, the, I think the clown's probably one of the easiest killers to learn. Very, very simple, but very fun. And uh, he's got a great sense of humor. Next up, we have the Deathslinger. Um... The Deathslinger I regard as hard. He is a hard killer to learn. Um, he is, um, and he doesn't have like <clears throat> a lot of powers. He basically just has his ability to aim and fires harpoon gun. Now this harpoon gun is very difficult to aim. Um, it takes a second to like hold it up and it does have a projectile that has to come out. It's not an instant shot and <sighs> Because of that, he's he's very difficult, and he doesn't have any ability to teleport. Um, so you have to think more strategically, and he moves slightly slower, as many of the ranged killers do. Um, he's uh, he's decently powerful, uh, well, decent low tier powerful. Um, you have to just be really really dedicated to be very very good with him. Um, again, you're gonna have to be you're gonna be looking at uh, you know 100 200 hours to get really good with him. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's just not really that much to say. You just have to practice that aim, adjust for the projectile speed, the, the you know, the how long it takes to align everything. Um, but once you get that, you're basically most of the way there as far as Deathslinger goes. Um, the Demogorgon. The Demogorgon, now he's no longer available. So I don't know if you're a newer player, um, 
there's not really that much you can do. But, you know, if you're someone who's been around DBD a while and you have an account that has the Demogorgon, um, I wish they'd bring him back. <laughs> uh, I would say he's normal. Um, he's not stupendously easy because you do have to utilize his teleportation ability. He basically digs holes in the ground and uh, you got to place those strategically. So you got to learn about that, how, you know, what works for that. Um, but his, um, he does have a lunge ability that you have to learn how to time, but is pretty, pretty lenient sometimes with its hitbox. And uh, I think he's not too hard to learn. I think he's about, well, normal. I think he's normal and he's a, he's a fun killer. Um, so yeah, just, uh, you just gotta learn those things and I think it'll be all set. Next up we have the doctor. Um, the doctor I would say probably is a normal tier, normal, not tier, uh, normal um, level of uh, learning curve. He um, he just kind of moves, you don't have to worry about teleports or anything, he doesn't run fast, he just normal speed. Um, the main thing you have to learn with him is proper use of his uh, static uh, attacks, which come out in a cone in front of him. And uh, you can shut down survivors from being able to jump pallets and windows. Uh, but you have to time it right, which is the one part of him where you do have to spend a lot of time and, and learn. So he's probably another like around 50 to 100 hours to be like really good. You could probably be pretty proficient with 50 hours. Um, there's not a whole lot to him other than that. Uh, you learn how to use his big static blast, which is that big AOE where you can make Swiper scream, you can find them. Um, it basically just saves you a perk slot, being able to just instantly like, hey, where is everybody? Um, and you know, making him scream is, is fun. Uh, but yeah, his main thing really is that, that cone that comes out where he can shock someone on the fly, getting the stacks going so people get madness and they start screaming randomly and have to deal with like trying to shake out of it. Um, you know, which wastes survivor time, which is good for you as killer. So overall, yeah, I'd say he's normal. Pyramid head, easily, very hard. Um, I main Pyramid Head, and he requires a huge, 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 huge amount of time to be very good. Um, I would say at least 200 hours, very similar to Blight. Um, the thing about him, you don't really have to have like extraordinary map knowledge, but there are several very big things that you have to know for Pyramid Head. One, you have to fully understand his power, whether it is, you know, when to, um, hook survivors versus when to send them to the cage. You also need to know uh, how to use his trails, but more importantly, there are two other things you really gotta know. Uh, one of which is how to counter loops. You have to know when a survivor is turning a corner, where that, you can't see them, where that survivor is gonna be. And after a while, you have to basically make it muscle memory. Because you don't, you can't think about it. If you hesitate or think too much, you're going to lose. You're going to mess up and you're going to lose it all. Um, you're going to lose your survivor. You're going to get away. So you got you to anticipate where a survivor is going to be. So you got to almost have like psychic power to like anticipate what a survivor is going to do. Um, and it gets even more complicated than that because some higher MMR survivors will anticipate you anticipating them and they will begin counter anticipating and you got to counter anticipate that to anticipate that. Yeah, we're, we're thinking with portals now. <laughs> um, but you also have to understand the rate that your uh, punishment attack comes out. Um, it comes out in a wave. You have to know like the timing of that. And he's very complex. He's, he's like surprisingly complicated. You can't just sit down and just be a god with him. You, you really got to dedicate a lot of time to him. I think he has one of the highest skill caps in the game. Uh, right up there with Nurse and Blight. He is just very complicated to use, but if you can use him, he is very, very deadly, despite having virtually no map pressure otherwise. Uh, you catch people in, you know, that's his ability. He's, he runs them down and, and they can't get away. They can't loop because he's a, he's a big anti-looper, big uh, counterplay to that. He, his specialty is just downing survivors quickly, getting them hooked and getting the pressure going that way. So yeah, he's very hard. Um, Freddy, I would regard as probably <sighs> probably easy. Um, not super easy. He does have like his teleportation ability. Um, he does have his like I like to call them just scream uh, scream puddles. 
Um, he has things like, you know, pallets. The thing is, it's very easy to utilize all of that because um, you're able to take survivors off guard very quickly. And of course, if they're asleep, you can just walk up on a survivor. They won't hear you because you won't have a terror radius to that survivor. Um, he's not really that hard to play. He's, he's He got a, a little bit of a nerf uh, recently because he was so easy to play and he was so powerful at that time. They, they kind of brought him down a little bit and I'm okay with that. Um, you know, I still get 4Ks easily with him. He is not a weak killer, um, but he is relatively easy to play. Um, if you're a new player, Freddy is, uh, he, he's good. Um, and something that if you want to learn one of the more complicated killers, especially the ones dealing with teleports, I think he's a good place to start. Um, so yeah, I would say he's easy, but not, you know, not too hard. Good, a good one to start off with for a little bit more, a dip in, a, a toe dip into the more complicated killers. Um, Next up we have Ghostface. Now Ghostface is surprisingly difficult to use. Um, you would think it would be simple. Um, if you think he's simple, you're, you're not gonna do well. Um, you need to learn how to stalk. He's, he's got a very particular skill set, and in order to be effective with him, you have to know that skill. You gotta know how to stalk. You gotta know how to watch survivors without them noticing you. You gotta know like how to prioritize different survivors. You gotta know how to 99 survivors, what that means. What it means, that's getting your stock to 99 so that you can time it so you can get that, that one, you can just click, get a 1% stock, they're exposed, and they get that down according to your time limit, like your rules. Um, so that you don't just like get everybody exposed, you can only like go after one person, the other people, their exposed gets wasted. You, you basically gotta play very efficiently. Um, he's, he's a killer that is surprising you gotta play him very efficiently. Um, but you will go far if you do that. So um, he has no teleport or anything, no quick movement. So you are very reliant on being extremely good with your stealth. He's the only killer that can crouch. You got to utilize that well. Um, you know, you, you just have to like get his uh, his timings and everything down. And once you do, you'll be highly rewarded. He's he's a he's an effective killer, uh, probably a mid range tier killer. But he is hard to learn. So. Uh, next up we have the hag. Hag is hard, like very, very hard. Um, with her, you know, she's another extremely good killer, but she has a very high skill cap. Um, she's the only killer that you have to play defensively, actually. Um, which is to say, at the beginning of a match, forget about the first two gens that pop. Just don't even, don't worry about it. Um, you can stop them, great, but you're, you're just not going to be able to. That's not your primary goal. Your primary goal is to set up, like, around maybe four gens, a, uh, a basically a web of traps, where any survivor that comes into that, you're going to get a hit. They, they come over here, another hit. And you can rapidly wear down a team. And um, she... There's, there's a lot to know. You, you, just, you have to know the maps pretty well because you have to know strategic spots to put them places where survivors won't anticipate them because if they anticipate them they will either run across your traps just to waste them or they'll use flashlights and burn away your traps um so there is a lot to know with hack she is very difficult to to understand how to play effectively she plays very differently than most of the other killers she does not chase down survivors she's just not fast enough if you cannot get a down within you know, five to ten seconds, abandon chase, get back to laying your traps. You know, it's just uh, it's just how she is. And because she's so different in that regard, she is very, very hard to, to learn and play. You're going to take a lot of hours. Next up, we have Hillbilly. Now, the Hillbilly... Oof, where is he going? Yeah, he's going to go very hard. He's going to go hard. Um, the Hillbilly is... Um, he's got a very powerful ability with his chainsaw. He can down survivors in one hit. That is very powerful. He can also run across the map because he can just run like crazy. I didn't know he was such a Olympic runner, but he is, man. He's, he's got incredible legs. And um, the thing about him though, his chainsaw is very, very, very difficult to use. Um, not, not quite insane like these three, but extremely difficult. You're gonna be looking at 50 to 100 hours. Um, he is probably um, like the, the thing is when you first start your chainsaw, it is like hypersensitive. 
which is good when you know what you're doing to be able to get quick downs on survivors that are right next to you because survivors like to do that. Um, because if, if you don't, you're going to be flying off into outer space. Space Billy is, is a thing until they patch that out. Probably soon. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he's, uh, I mean, like, hitting stuff and, like, bouncing off terrain. Anyway, um, he's, uh, he's a very difficult killer to learn. Um, I actually struggle a little bit with Hillbilly, but I have seen God-tier Hillbillies play, and they take a lot of hours. It's, um... Not one I would start off with. It might be tempting to start off with him because he's one of the basic killers. And um, so you're getting basically for free if you buy DVD. But he is pretty hard. And I I don't know, man. Unless you're really wanting to go with that kind of play style where you can zip around the map really quickly and get the one hit downs. You, I mean, you're going to be looking at a lot of hours if you do that. But he is, uh, he is a, a very effective killer. So next up we have the Huntress. The Huntress is also a hard killer. Um, she is almost deceptively hard because you really got to know your timings. Um, a lot of people play her and a lot of people are just not that good with her. Um, as far as what I see when I'm playing Survivor, she um, her hatchets are kind of like trucks, but you still have to the hit boxes, but you still have to aim very carefully and you still have to, because you only have limited number of hatchets. If you miss too many times, you're going to have to waste time going to a locker to get more. She also moves slower than most uh, killers. Um, she only moves at 110%, much like Deslinger and Trickster. Uh, she's, she's one of the harder ones to learn, even though she does not have any other kind of complicated um, things to learn like you know she doesn't have any fast travel or teleport or anything um but if you want to be effective with her you really got to put in some hours and really get that practice you can almost see a pattern with these hard killers they have like one thing they're good at but it's really hard to be good with that um so yeah i, I would say uh she's probably she's almost normal almost normal but i feel like she is just a little bit harder you know what? I think I might actually put her in normal, but that's a tough one. That's a tough one. I think you can be good with her. Um, normal, you're looking at around 50 hours. Um, if you're already pretty good at aiming, you might do better with her. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna move, it, move her to normal, move her from hard to normal. She's right on the border. She's right on the border between those. So yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna stick her in normal. Um, I'm also going to flip these around. There we go. There we go. Okay, that feels better. <laughs> Actually, we'll do that. Okay, next up we have Bubba. Bubba is a very simple killer to play. Um, I think he's easy, but not quite easiest. Bubba is the kind of killer that um, he seems easy to get into, but is uh, a little bit tricky to master. Um, you have to learn what not to hit when running around objects or he'll throw a tantrum and you'll waste a lot of seconds of uh, valuable seconds of time um, Also in order to be effective you also have to kind of think strategically Because um, you might down a killer over or a survivor over here and you might need to go to the other side of the map You might need to go over here to this gen or that gen. It's not quite as simple as he first seems he's is he's, he's deceptively complex to a small degree um, you will have those killers that do nothing but like attack one person and then try to face camp Those are it's almost a running meme because he is very it's very easy for him to get one down But these players are usually not very good and their only way to even get a kill is to do that Is to use a chainsaw catch an unlucky survivor and then just face camp um, Which is where I don't get too mad at these kind of people because I know that they're just not that skilled um I have seen more skilled uh, Bubba's. They never face camp because they don't need to. It's actually a detriment to do that. You waste time when you're face camping somebody. The gins are just popping one after another. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna get one kill, or maybe two, and the other survivors are all gonna get out every time. So if you're a good Bubba and you're skillful, um, you're gonna know how to use your chainsaw properly, and you're gonna get effective 4Ks more often than not. Um, so yeah, I think uh, he needs more practice than like Clown, but I think he's also um, not too hard to use. 
probably around like I don't know 30 hours I guess I don't know <laughs> uh, Legion um, I think Legion likewise is probably one of the more easy killers to learn um, though I think he's probably ahead of Bubba as far as like his complexity because you have to um, know how to use his power to quick stab people and then move on and know when to get out of that uh, go back to his normal form so he can get downs um, but I don't see him as like that complicated he's pretty simple um, he's a lot of fun to play uh, I think he's great for uh, beginners and uh, I think he's uh, you know he's, he's a mid-tier killer as far as his power and I think he's a great way to start off if you're a new player um, so yeah I mean there just isn't that much to say about him I mean you just you, you get your hits in listen to your killer instinct try to get as many because they have to waste time mending um, and just know when to get out of your power and uh, know how to uh, counter loop like know how to catch people that's it like pretty basic stuff if you're if you're really good with your killer fundamentals that all killers need you're gonna do pretty well with legion michael myers um i regard him as more of a normal level uh difficulty killer he's um he's a little bit more complicated to use he seems simple at first uh but you have to get your tears up and in order to do that you have to do things like stalking and whatnot um, but you don't have to put as much effort into it as Ghostface. Ghostface has to be very careful and has to play harder. Um, now the counter to that is Michael Myers generally is not that powerful unless you're running like a tombstone add-on or you're, you're just like really, really, uh, good at stalking. Then you can be pretty effective, but otherwise, mm, not, not so much. Um, unfortunately he moves at basically normal speed, like survivor-esque speed for much much of the game um he does have a lot of advantages as far as his stealth is but he's overall um a bit complicated to use effectively um in order to be able to get it a lot of it's very subtle stuff knowing how to stalk um he cannot crouch like the uh ghost face can and uh, like i said he moves slower than normal um for like a chunk of the game so but once you get him you know how to get him up to tier three he's very effective and but that takes a, a while to know how to get him up to tier three as fast as possible because once you do you can start that snowball go and it get down 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 and it's he's pretty cool but he does require a lot more uh, knowledge and effort and in, in to play the nemesis um i would also regard as a normal tier um some might even say easy but i don't think so um and in fact In fact, I'm actually going to move him up to hard because he has a power that's a little similar to Pyramid Heads, but it requires less difficulty to use. The thing about him is that you have to know a lot of different things. You have to know how to use his whip properly. You have to know how to get down as quick as possible because he does, he does have to hit people three times because you had to infect him the first time on the first hit. You also need to know how to read your zombies effectively which can take a bit of practice. Um, I do think he is in like the 50 to 100 hour range of experience needed to become uh, effective. Um, I mean, because a lot of the uh, Nemesis players I encounter are clearly not as uh, not as good and will generally run around mouse wanting um, or missing a lot with their, their, uh, their whips. Um, some of the skill from Pyramid Head spills over into Nemesis, so I might be underestimating how difficult he actually is to use. He might, uh, some people might see him as even higher, but, um, I, I just don't have that, that much difficulty with him, but he is, uh, I think definitely hard. You know, you just, you just have to know the timings on things. That's, that's the key thing. Um, knowing how to hit through windows is a big one, um, uh, because the windows are a little bit finicky as far as his whip goes. Um, knowing exactly how to time like a pallet drop, get that hit in, knowing how to get his tier three as fast as possible, especially his tier two. Like you get a, if you're stuck in tier one, you're going to be in for a bad time. Um, and again, reading the zombies is critical because they're basically, uh, free surveillance cameras around the map. Uh, they don't really do that much damage and you can't control the zombies. So you don't have to really worry about that so much. Um, but it does have pretty interesting add-ons that you can kind of 
toy around with that a little bit and it just requires significantly more knowledge than I think the ones below him. Nurse is easily very hard. Nurse is extremely hard actually. Um, I would put her probably here. Um, the nurse is the second hardest killer in the game to learn. Um, she, like, she only has one power. That is the power to blink or teleport. Um, it is probably the most powerful ability in the entire game because it shuts down everything for the survivors. They can't vault, they can't drop pallets. They're not effective whether they go up or down in a, you know, upstairs. They can't, you know, if, they, if they're uh, even on another floor, that does not help them. Um, there's not much they can do. And she can multiple teleport. Depending on your add-ons, you can do two or maybe even three teleports. Um, she is just highly effective, but requires an insane amount of practice. Insane practice. So, um, basically, uh, you're going to have to learn. When she, hold, when she holds her power, a little invisible orb comes out. And so with certain add-ons, you can see this thing. And this is where you're going to teleport to. And you have to know the speed that that's coming out. If a survivor is trying to uh, counter you, they may run towards you so that you overshoot it. Um, you have to know exactly, exactly to the like millisecond how to read survivor's behavior. You got to know like where to put this teleport. And once you teleport there, you got to instantly know where a survivor is, turn around and do another teleport to get that, that M1 hit. Um, she is very difficult, very difficult to use. Um, in my opinion, only topped by the blight as far as how difficult she is, but she is, I think, the number one deadliest killer in the game. So the time investment is definitely worth it if you feel uh, inclined to take that challenge on. Not recommended for new players whatsoever. Unless you're feeling real bold. <laughs> uh, the Oni. Um, I find the Oni to be pretty hard to play. Um, I think he's probably top of the hard tier. Um, he's also an extremely effective killer, one of the best killers in the game. But his ability to run across the maps and um, everything, like, you just, you have to know how to use that ability properly. It's a little bit like the Hillbilly's ability, but there's a little more to it than that. Because you also have to know, like, how to attack with his, his, his club. And um, there, he's actually very, very similar to the Hillbilly in a lot of ways. Um, I think he's... You know, the more I think about it, the more I think maybe they're almost like... I'm going to move him like this. I think this is going to be better. Yeah, Hillbilly's pretty damn hard. Um, he does have to get his power, which isn't really that big of a deal. It's, it's not that, like, hard. Like, you get a sword hit to start with, drink the blood and try to get your power as soon as you can. Um, he's definitely helped by certain perks, knowing where survivors are, because you know when you're in your souped up power state, um, that only lasts so many seconds and then you're out of it. So you gotta make a really tight, efficient use out of that and get as many squishes as you can. And um, that just requires a lot of uh, patience, practice, things like that. And um, it's not impossible. He's not like insanely hard to learn, but he is hard. Um, but again, very rewarding. Here and there, having that screen go across the map and running survivors, helpless survivors down, it's a pretty great feeling. So if you do decide to main an Oni, uh, I think you're going to meet for a good time, but it is going to require a lot of um, time investment, especially with if a, if a survivor is right next to you, um, being able to get those flicks in. It's hard, man. It's it's really hard. The pig, I think, is probably normal, but I think she's significantly harder than... I think she's about right here. Um, she's a, technically a stealth killer. Um, she does have her traps that can, you know, explode people's heads, which is a lot of fun. Um... But, you know, and while that adds map pressure, which is pretty automatic, you also do need to know the fundamentals of stealth. She also has her lunge attack to come out with, which if you get really good with that is, you know, pretty effective. Um, 
I think she's just absolutely in the middle as far as like how much time it takes to actually be really good with her and be very effective. Um, you just kind of learn those, uh, those stealth fundamentals and you have to learn that lunge. I think those are the two major things that you have to understand on top of just general killer fundamentals. Um, she's a fun, a pretty fun killer to learn. And uh, it's always fun making survivors frustrated when they can't get their traps off and they keep going to the different, uh, you know, jigsaw puzzle things, sticking their arms in, trying to do the mini game, to the, 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 the uh, skill check to uh, try to get them off and they just hear the laughing. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I think she's about normal. Um, if you put a lot of time into her, she can be pretty effective. So. Uh, plague, I regard plague as probably she's definitely ahead of Nemesis and Deathslinger. I'd probably put her here as far as how difficult she is. Not insanely hard, but you do have to learn like where to puke, um, who to puke on, when to go, go grab your corrupted pools, and that kind of thing. You know, um, the, the key with her is you want to like you start with one sometimes survivors don't want to cleanse and that's fine it's not a big of a deal as it used to be um if survivors cleanse around the middle of the map you want to try to preserve one of those corrupted pools around the center of the map for the end game um and only use the ones in the outer um she recently got a well this past winter she got a buff a uh, small buff but an important one so she's uh she's never been super hard to play but I think that she's, uh, if you want to be highly, highly effective, because I regard her as an S tier uh, killer as far as her power. If you want to be highly effective, then you are going to need a significant time investment because she does not have an ability to traverse the map very quickly. She is also very tall. So you have to keep those things in mind. So you want to do things like when you're approaching a gin you know has somebody on it, hide behind a tree as you approach, hide behind an LT wall, whatever building or anything you can get between you and them, the better, especially if you can go, uh, if you can have them oblivious um, in any way, shape or form, uh, that is gonna help you a lot with the plague. Um, there's a lot that goes into her, like you really gotta know um, how to counter really good survivors. Um, so I would, I mean, she's, you could almost consider her normal. You can be effective normal just because she's so powerful. But I think if you really want to get a lot out of her, you're going to have to go that extra mile and really know how to utilize your puke and make those shots because she just sprays your puke everywhere. And if you want to learn how to snipe puke, shoot through a window, do like a little squirt here or there, catch them on, you know, when survivors are playing, you know, peekaboo around a corner, um, that is going to require a lot more knowledge of how to use it and the physics of her, her vomit as it's arcing out. So I do regard her as a hard uh killer to learn spirit i likewise uh regard her as hard but not crazy um i would say she is probably is she had a death slinger oh goodness i think she is i think she's even ahead of um no yes oh goodness we have we have a bit of a conundrum um I'm gonna put her a little bit ahead of Plague. Uh, she does require a lot of mind gaming. You know what, I'm gonna put her behind Plague. She requires a lot of mind gaming. So you really have to understand how survivors like to play. You have to know how they move around uh, loops, pallets, LT walls, uh, killer shack, all of that. Um, her power of course is uh, going invisible and being able to hear survivors. Always wear a good pair of headphones. Um, That'll really help you out. I would not recommend using Strider. Strider makes the sounds of survivors louder. However, if you ever don't use Survivor, it's gonna screw you up. Strider, I mean, it, it will screw you up. Um, so I would say just don't use Strider. It may be tempting, don't do it. Try to get used to it the natural way. That way you can use that perk slot and do have like a Thanatophobia or Ruin or something else that's gonna really help you out. Um, literally any other perk is actually going to be more useful. So you really have to know how survivors think. That's a that's a big, big, big one with her because it, it's the only way you're going to be able to get those hits, get those downs. Um, so yeah, I would I would say she's pretty hard to learn. Um, 
so but she's super super effective like she's she's one of the uh the s tier as far as uh power goes um because of her ability to just get those downs to sur surprise survivors and to leave behind a husk which she can you know well she can either use the husk or not she can fake it survivors don't know they have to guess what you're guessing and uh she's a lot of fun to play but she is very hard oh oh trapper poor poor trapper um he is one of the easiest killers to play in the whole game maybe the easiest i'm kind of going i'm kind of going uh by my thoughts live here i'm not going by a script or anything um he's basically a mouse one killer um and unfortunately a lot of that is due to his lack of power um and most killer tier lists um including mine uh i consider him a d tier killer uh he's just he doesn't have very much map pressure uh he can't teleport or move he doesn't have much of an ability he, he can lay his traps down but getting his traps is a big pain unless you run certain add-ons um, that lets you start with all your traps, but even then you can't pick them up. Um, he has to waste a lot of time, but um, he is easy. He's easy to pick up and play. If you are new with Dead by Daylight, and I kind of suspect this is true, that behavior specifically keeps him at his power level to make him easy for players to get into. Um, he is very fun. Um, despite me you know, talking about his lack of power, he is very fun to play. It is very satisfying when, you know, you're in the middle of the map and then off on the side of the map somewhere, maybe around a gin or around a hook or something, you're, ah, you know, somebody screams and it's it, it's really funny. And you just walk over there, give them a mouse one and they're down. Um, it's, it's pretty fun. And uh, so he is easy to use. There's not a lot of, ability that he has for you to like have to learn very very simple killer perhaps the simplest killer in the whole game um yeah he, he probably was made specifically for new players so if you're new take him for a spin he comes with the game you got nothing to lose play some trapper he'll be fun and try not to play seriously this this is a this is an important tip for you new players don't try to play seriously if you're new this is a game that is skill-based and knowledge-based, and that is gonna take time. Don't worry about it, man. Just relax and have fun. Enjoy it. I, When I was a new player, I had so much fun. I was laughing constantly. I didn't even realize how badly I sucked, but I had so much fun. I had so many laughs, you know, survivors looping me or me looping a killer, weird shenanigans that happened. It was a lot of fun, and I had a lot of fun with Trapper when I was a new player, so. I think he's a good one to start with. The trickster, the trickster is a little bit hard to use. Um, he's hard, but not insanely hard. I. Mm, mm, I'd probably say he's right here. I'd probably say he's right here. Um, he's pretty hard, like, because you have to know how to make your shots. He's harder to learn than, than, uh, Huntress, who's a little bit similar in power. They're both, they both move a little bit slower than normal, uh, 110%, and they both, like, throw things, and they both get th their, uh, stuff out of, uh, lockers, their ammo out of lockers, so it's something that they have a lot of similarities. However, um, you have to get multiple hits to get an injury state or a down with Trapper, and because of that, he is just, he's not as effective of a killer and he's harder to know because he, harder to learn. You have to know how to, how to, like, cause they come out and they have travel time and you have a survivor doing this. They're just running back and forth and you have to be able to nail that as, in, in as short a time as possible. Otherwise you're going to get away or you're just losing valuable time. The gins are popping off left and right. Um, he is a lot harder with very low reward. Um, I would not recommend him for new players whatsoever. I'd say if you really, really want to go with a ranged killer, go with a Huntress. You nail one hatchet, and you're going to get a hit. Him, it, you got to grind a survivor down. He even got a buff not that long ago, and he still is... <sighs> he, he's just not in a great spot, and he's very difficult. 
and he doesn't but he doesn't have any other like power like it's just that's it that's his one power he doesn't you know he can't move or teleport in any special way um but phew, nailing those those shots with his his glass shards that he throws it's pretty hard the trickster or no no uh the twins my bad the twins the twins is both easy and hard i would regard her as probably top of normal um arguably hard um she has a very very unique power in that she's actually two killers you have victor and charlotte victor is the the little guy um victor is basically all of your power charlotte has nothing special about her whatsoever she's purely a mouse one killer um but you you release victor and he runs really fast um but he also has because he's so low to the ground it can be a little bit tricky to seeing stuff so you have to like get used to that um he also has uh a little bit trouble tracking survivors um but if you can find them which requires a bit of experience you can do a leap and land on him he basically has a hitbox like a truck not too crazy hard um but you do have to know how to play both of them effectively unfortunately as of right now um and this has been the case with twins ever since she came out the only effective way to play her is to slug um her power just isn't very good it's it's powerful but it's not very fun to play if that makes any sense which is subjective um she is the least played killer in the game by a pretty big magnitude actually because of that because you have to switch your consciousness between victor and charlotte constantly and when you're playing one and not the other they're basically just standing there and it's it's a little bit frustrating at times so you have to kind of get used to that and you got to get used to players um you have to embrace her playstyle of slugging um you got to get hits in and then use victor to like down 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 and then you'll get the 4k but she's a bit difficult to use i'm oof i think she's more difficult probably than i think she is more difficult than either of these two i, I hate to put yet another person up here and hard but the more i think about it the more i think she is hard um okay camera's not not blocking nemesis um next up we have the wraith um the wraith i regard pretty easy um he's almost in the easiest category um Oh, is he? Oh my goodness. Oh no. I think he is. I think he's one of the easiest killers. Um, is that a clown? No, he's behind clown, I think. So his power is to go invisible. And he can run really, really fast um, while invisible. And he can take survivors off guard. Um, and, you know, he gets a, uh, an extra boost of speed when he comes out of cloak. So he can like quickly come out of cloak hit a survivor, recloak, or continue chase. I believe he runs at normal speed, um, is, is baseline. So, I mean, he's, he's a good one to start with to learn some basics, some fundamentals, as far as killer goes. Uh, when you get a little bit more advanced with him, you can actually uh, do things like body blocking because you can get ahead of a running survivor, get in front of them in a window or a pallet. They can't do anything and they always like hesitate Every time you get in front of them, they like continue trying to squeak past you. While they're trying to squeak past you, decloak and get a hit. There you go. Pretty simple killer. Uh, great for beginners. Um, and is only just barely more advanced than the trapper, but he's actually much more powerful. He's very powerful. Like you will, if you're, especially if you get a lot of practice in, um, you get really good with him, you're going to be pretty effective. He's one of the most effective stealth killers. I would even regard him pretty much ahead of every other stealth killer in the game um like he's, he's probably more powerful than uh, ghost phase pig um not spirit but he's he's up there i think if you wanted to really like specialize with him main him i think you're gonna be in for a good time pinhead is uh i don't think he's as difficult to use as a lot of people think um I think he's less difficult to use than the Huntress, which may sound like heresy. The thing is, um, most of his ability is like, it's just not that hard to use. Like if you use his, um, 
his power, it sends out a thing a little bit like the nurse, but with the nurse, it's like time critical. You gotta be able to like, boom, boom, get the hit. With him, send it out to where the survivor is, take your time. Where I see pinheads messing up, they send out their, their little like vision thing and you know, he beams out his consciousness and he's like looking around there. They instantly try to attack. They think it needs to be an instant hit. Put it out there near the survivor. Take a second, look around. Survivor nearby, boom. It's not hard. It's not hard. And that is the most difficult thing about his power. And that's it. Um, everything else is uh, pretty straightforward. Um, you know, you gotta know when to teleport to your box, when to not to teleport to your box. Um, really good pinheads know like, generally where the box spawns are throughout a map so that can help you because if you solve your own box it's going to be absolutely mayhem for everyone involved so yeah <laughs> do that um but i don't think he's all that hard honestly um and he's he's a decently effective killer around mid tier ish um and he's a lot of fun and a very cool villain so yeah i would say um it's, it's not the worst to start off with if you wanted to. You just got to get used to that one power. Um, I would say practice a little bit with the nurse since she comes with the game just to feel out what I'm talking about. And if you don't mind that or you think maybe you could get used to that kind of like hold down the button and it charges it up as it goes further from you. Um, and you don't want to play nurse, go with Pinhead. He's great. Next up we have the, um, the artist who is a very powerful killer. Um, I would regard her as probably... This is a bit of a tough one, actually. Um, she's not a hard killer, I can straight up say that. Uh, she might be considered... <sighs> I think she's normal tier. Um, is she ahead of Doctor? Ooh, she's not ahead of a of, uh, pig for sure. Hell, I don't even think she's ahead of Mikey. Um, she's very powerful, like I said, but um, her power, like you, you have to summon the ravens or the crows. I, I get it mixed up all the time. The crows, and um, knowing how to like counter loop and send them out to the gins, you can do that. Um, she's not. Um, she's not too hard to play. She's not too hard to play. You just gotta know how to use your, uh, your crows just right, you know? Knowing how to set one up on this side of a pallet, one up on this side of a pallet, you're running someone around, or even just set one up on the side of a pallet or on the side of a window or something. Um, you can shut down some loops knowing when to, like, break chase, uh, knowing how to read a survivor if they decide to just run, just hold W and run. Um, which isn't that complicated. Um, she doesn't have to do any weird timing like Pinhead or Nurse. Um, she doesn't really have any teleport to worry about, any kind of like quick map traversal to worry about. Worry about. Um, I think she's probably bottom of normal, borderline easy. Um, I think she's slightly more difficult than uh, Freddy, which is why she's in normal. Um, but I, I think she's not too terribly hard to start with. Just depends on if you really, really like playing with crows. Your bird person, that's your killer. Next up we have Sadako. Um, Sadako I re would regard as a normal as far as her power. Um, I would say she is probably though, uh, right here. I think she's about right here. Um, just shy of Pinhead as far as her, uh, how difficult she is to know. Um, you basically have to know where survivors are in a map. That's probably the most difficult thing you have to like learn, which takes a lot of time. So she's dependent on like where survivors' positions are. Um, she's a little bit underpowered right now, but still effective. Um, I would recommend uh, phasing in and out of your power, uh, manifesting and demanifesting, basically, technically. Uh, during mid chase, because when you demanifest, you don't have a red stain. You are functionally invisible. Now they can visually see you if you're close, um, but without a red stain, that is a humongous advantage. Plus, nobody can body block you, which is pretty cool. Um, so, 
pretty much just uh, try to sur uh, surprise survivors and make sure to demanifest whenever you are um, in mid chase and it only takes you like one second to manifest so if you know you can get a hit manifest get the hit and you either run them down or demanifest and do it again it doesn't really slow you down hardly like just barely just barely like it's nothing to worry about um yeah she's not terribly hard to play um but because of her limitations of her power you do have to play um well to make her effective so i'm gonna put her in that normal tier now here we have the dredge who's the newest killer as of the time of this video um <sighs> He's a little bit difficult to say. I have played him on the PTB. He's going to be coming out in just a couple days. Um, honestly, I think he's going to be very hard. Um, not as hard as Hag, but I think he's going to be very hard, like surprisingly hard, because I think as the meta unfolds, Survivors are going to know what to do to avoid his remnant that he leaves behind. They're going to know how to avoid his locker plays, um, how he moves and everything. Like, I think there's going to be a lot of counterplay early on. However, I do regard him as potentially an S tier killer because he basically has a toolkit of everything. He can teleport, he can stealth, he can counter loop. Like, there's so many things he can do. And I think he does everything quite well. There are lockers all over a map. So you're going to have to know every single map and know where all those lockers are to be highly, highly effective. If you want to be a god tier dredge, you are going to have to know where all those lockers are. Um, you're also going to have to know how to read survivors. You're going to have to know how to fake them out with your power. You're going to have to know how to, like, when to actually teleport back to your remnant you're going to know when the survivor is about to like break loop and run when to, you should break loop and run when to chase when to go up the chase there's a lot a lot to know and understand with him utilizing his nightfall power properly um he's a very complex killer the most dynamic killer i think we've ever had and um i look forward to playing him i am very excited but I do think he's going to be very hard to play effectively once the meta settles down and survivors know how to counter him. Um, so yeah, that is my list of the easiest to play and the hardest to play killers in the game. Again, this does not reflect their power necessarily, I did mention their power here and there, but if you're a new player, this is my opinion on something to consider. I think uh, starting off with a... Uh, a fairly simple killer probably is, is good for the fundamentals because the fundamentals will spill over into all of the rest of the killers. So, yeah. Uh, guys, I I do hope y'all enjoyed my, uh, my video here of all of the easiest to play to hardest to play killers. Uh, if you did, like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the live stream.